In this video, let's talk about passing parameters to action methods. In the previous video, we started creating this categories page. And at that time, we're saying that we are going to display the categories right here. So instead of actually use data to display the categories, let's start by hard coding different categories here. So let me change this to an ordered list. And then I'm going to have a couple of list items. Here, what I want to do is I want to show two different categories. When the user clicks on the category, it goes to the added category page. So for that, I can use a anchor tab. And the first category I want to show perhaps is beverage. And the second category, maybe just meat. So what the URL should be. Let's go back to program.cs and look at this pattern over here. So we have controller, we have action, and then it has a optional parameter over here. This parameter when specified will become a parameter of the action method. So we can take advantage of this URL pattern. And let's go back to index.cshtml over here. And we can say slash categories slash edit. Edit is the action that I want to do because the, when the user click on the beverage, the user wants to be able to edit the beverage category. So here, I just want to hard code the ID of this category. For now, I'm hard coding number one, and then the ID of meat is number two. So since this kind of URL pattern can be already taken care of by the map controller root method, we just need to create a controller action method that corresponds to this URL pattern that is specified over here, right? With the controller name, action method name, and a parameter. So let's go to categories controller here and let's add another action method. As I mentioned, the return type, you can always use I action result. The name of the method should be added. The parameter should correspond to the pattern. So in this case, it's going to be integer and I'm just going to say ID. I want to just show this ID on the page. So instead of returning a view, I can use a different result that is called content result. Again, this content result actually implements this I action result interface to prove. I can just go to the definition and you can see that it derived from action result. And of course, action result itself implements the I action result interface. So the content result uh, has a property that's called content. Uh, I can assign a string to it. So I'm going to say ID dot to string. Now in the categories page, I have two links that goes to category number one and category number two. And then in the controllers, I'm expecting those links will be mapped to this action method. And then eventually the ID of the category will be displayed on the page. So let's give it a try. Okay, let's navigate to the categories page first. And we see the beverage and meat. So let's click on the first one, which is beverage. And then you can see number one rendered on the screen. If I go back and click on meet, we see number two rendered on the screen. Let's take this moment and look at this URL over here. So of course, if I put 222, two, two, it should display just 222. Two, two. So what if I put ABC over here? And you can see that it says it's to zero. Why does it show zero over here? So let's go back to the code over here. You can see that this is integer and the default value of the integer is zero. So ASP.NET Core does not actually throw exception when the mapping from the URL to the parameter fails. It actually provides a default value. And in fact, it's smart enough to know that whether this is integer or not. I can use string as the parameter type. Of course, in this case, it's able to display the string value. But if I use integers and then change this to integer, it will be able to tell that a integer is provided and just automatically convert that to integer. So then what if zero is a valid value for ID? In that case, we can use optional parameters like this. And then we can use a if statement. You can say that if ID has value, then we're going to do this. Otherwise, 
we can say no content. So let's run the application again. If I use one, two, three, it shows one, two, three. If I change this to A, B, C, then it shows null content because it's not able to actually convert ABC into integer. Therefore, ASP.NET Core provides a default value for this nullable integer. And the default value for nullable integer, of, of course, is null. So therefore, it falls into this branch and displays null content string on the page. And what happens if I don't provide the parameter at all? So I hit enter. You can see null content is also displayed and that's because this parameter is not provided. So it is supposed to be null and then again falls into this branch. So we have seen that the parameter is passed as part of the URL like this. Another way to pass the parameter is to use query string. So here we can use question mark with the beginning of the query string and then we can say ID. So this name ID corresponds to the parameter name. And then we can say 555, if I hit enter, 555 is being displayed. So ASP.NET Core is smart enough to map both URL and query string to action method parameters. We just need to make sure that the query string's name corresponds to the name of the parameter. And then the value will be automatically assigned to the parameter. Of course, here it's going to follow the same pattern if we use something that cannot be converted into that particular type of the parameter then it's going to just assign a default value for the parameter that's everything i want to cover in this video and i'll see you in the next one